Hi there, and thank you for clicking on my video. Uh, today we're going to be co covering the Dual Tox Assist. Um, it recently got an Incarnon adapter, so we're going to be covering the Incarnon build for it. Um, just going over the evolutions, because it's going to be the main discerning factor of uh, more or less how we build it. Uh, we're going to use Process of Elimination, and there actually is one that we're going to talk a bit about. Not a lot, but just... It's circumstantial. Uh, so the Incarnon mode more or less turns it into a bullet hose. Um, the Dual Toxist is an older weapon. Uh, and it has a special place in most people's hearts. Because it was at one point in time one of the stronger weapons in the game. But now you have stuff like, you know, the Epitaph or the Nucor, you know, there, there's, a, a you know, the Kuva Seer, stuff like that, where it's just, it they're just way stronger. Um, but this, the Incarnon, definitely breathed more life into this. Um, if you didn't pick it this time around, definitely make sure to pick it up the next time it shows up in a couple weeks. But let's go over the evolutions. Evolution 1, you can't pick. It just enables the Incarnon mode. The one that's going to be... I've seen a couple other creators talk about this, and I didn't agree with it. When you, The second evolution is Carnage Rain and Fevered Frenzy. Uh, Fevered Frenzy is increased damage by plus 50. You get that period ability and has a second conditional on ability cast. Plus 5% multi-shot, stacks up to 20x, so basically another bullet once it stacks up. Um, Carnage Rain is increased damage by plus 60, so an additional 10, and plus 33% direct damage per status type affecting the target. This weapon does appear to have additive damage scaling with the galvanized mods. Um, and to be honest, I actually went with this. Uh, when you add everything up together with a modded weapon, Fevered Frenzy comes out ahead by like, two percent okay uh and assuming you're in the category of getting an incarnon for this you probably have things like lethal lethal torrent and the galvanized multi-shot mod um with and the issue is is that the multi-shot is a bigger bonus it is and it even compensates for the loss of base damage but in an average mission, you're pr when you're running through doing an exterminate or something like that, you're not going to get 20 stacks on this. So it's less base damage and potentially more multi-shot. And that will co overcompensate. But the fact is, is that with the second one, you get 10 more base damage, which is about 8%. And then you have like... 12 to 13 percent higher scaling on status so i decided to do an encumber build with this and where even though running the multi-shot mod or the multi-shot evolution would result in higher damage the scaling on using encumber and getting all of those extra statuses it hits for like almost a million anyway. Like per instance, not like over a couple shots, like per instance of damage, it hits for almost a million. I I don't feel like this is necessary um, to min-max it this much. I went for this because the direct damage per status type, because we're running an encumber build, is just way more consistent, generic, I pick it up and go strength where you don't have to rely on like a faction mod, right? Like you're just going to destroy stuff with this. We are going to be going a more flat damage focused build and use encumber as our scaling. Um, and I'll show a couple variations and obviously like the level cap setup and everything. But I appreciate, even though it's 33% because it's an, I used encumber, it gets this gets plenty to chew on. So you can still get kills uh, when you're starting to build up stacks on your galvanized mods. It's really it feels really good building those up. Maybe the first one, if you will, um, 
is a little bit more pissy trying to get it stacked up. But the fact is, is having a galvanized like scaling where you don't have to earn it with a kill. So say you're using like a primary or a melee to kill. You can pick this up and kill trash mobs to get one or two stacks on your galvanized mods and be able to kill all the way up to level cap because you you always have this and because you have the encumber and the super high scaling that that gives you this will always have base damage to chew on and in order to you know beat out if you will hornet strike um you would need simple math so Hornet Strike is what? 220 divided by 33 is seven statuses. And 360 for, say, like a Merciless would be 11. Well, Encumber with a full auto, um, like on the status, because we went 260, 60s, this 43% is going to be just about 100. So you're gonna get that amount of status pretty damn quickly on a bullet hose build. So I I just don't feel like the potential min-maxing. Now, obviously, if you're looking for your answer, like, oh, I want to do a disruption, Fevered Frenzy does win out in terms of a yes-no, absolutely min-maxed bonus. But the multi-shot does start getting hurt by the fact, like, if it was, if you didn't have any multi-shot on the weapon, the multi-shot, like, modded, the multi-shot would be a straight-up damage boost, double damage, right? But if you compare it to this, you would basically need three statuses to equal the same bonus. So it's how it multiplies. So in terms of math, the uh, Carnage Reign is... 135 divided by 125 is 8% stronger. Um, and that's per status, right? Or the base damage increase. And this affects the direct damage scaling. Um, and then we have to compare it to uh, the multi-shot increase. So the galvanized multi-shot is 110. Uh, then you have to add in the base 100 for, you know, shooting one bullet because there's no innate multi-shot. It's just one bullet, one shot. And then you have to add in the galvanized stacks. And that's what, uh, 30 times 4? Actually, let's double check. I'm not sure about okay. that one. Bring it to life. If you die, I got dibs on your stuff. Yeah, 30 times 4. So, plus 120. So, 330. So, the damage increase out the total is going to basically be the difference between 330 plus 100. So, 430 divided by 330 is 30%, which is sizable. Don't get me wrong, that's sizable. But then the 8% gets taken off of this. And we're going to be modding Lethal Torrent which lowers this down to like 23% effective DPS increase. Even more if you have like a Riven or something that has multi-shot on it, which if you have a Riven for this, you should have multi-shot on it. So that eats into this bonus damage increase. Now, obviously more shots is more, shots is more better, but in terms of like the overall damage bonus, it's, it's a stat you're trying to get with multiple mods and potentially a Riven. So the the bonus tends up the bonus damage ends up being kind of eaten into. Still an awesome stat though. Let's not let's not get it twisted. It's still a really strong stat. But comparing So we'll do the base damage also. So the base mod is 40 times 3, right? The galvanized, let's just double check this. All right, so it's 40 times 3, 
which gives us 120. And we're going to compare the damage increase because the scales at the that evolution scales additively with galvanized shot, or at least it appears to. Um, so it's going to be plus 33%. So it's going to be 153 divided by 120. So it's, you know, about 20%. 27. So it it is what it is. But it's an additional form of scaling I'm not trying to mod for. Make your time count. So I went with that one. You know, personal choice. If you want to do the multi-shot, it's definitely a big buff. But they end up being about the same in terms of the overall effectiveness. Um, the, the only thing that's really going to push one or other, one or the other in more favor is going to depend on if you have a ribbon, right? So that's up to you. This one gives a little bit more base damage. It's nothing to sneeze at. It's a couple of percent. Um, and the direct damage is additional scaling. Uh, so it's it's kind of up to you. They end up being about apples and oranges, but um, having used this for a bit, a couple days now, I, I don't notice this being quote-unquote weaker, if you will. But I would notice not having multi-shots. So if you're doing a long run, say like a disruption, and you don't have a Riven, or you're using... Um, you're using, uh, say, like Arcane Velocity as your fire rate source where you're not using Lethal Torrent. Um, and you have an additional form of scaling. Like, I find myself when I'm trying to use this and make it scale a little bit more, taking off Lethal Torrent and using, uh, and using that spot as my faction mod and moving the fire rate to Arcane Velocity, in which case Fevered Frenzy would win out once it's fully stacked. But you got to make sure to stack it up, otherwise you're not getting the bonus. So for general use, just running around, no faction mods, just wanting to bop shit, even in Steel Path, um, this one feels really, really good. But that's about the closest thing to a hot take uh, that I'm really going to talk about. Um, go over Evolution 3. This one's pretty boring. Um, reload from Empty. Uh, this can help if you time it right. Uh, you can turn it into the Incarnon mode really, really fast. Uh, but it feels like it's fast enough. Honestly, it feels like it's fast enough. Even though the reload is 2.3... It's in Karnon mode so f like so often, especially with how big the charge capacity is, uh, with max charges being 270. It, it feels like you have it long enough to where you're in the in Karnon mode long enough that the reload time doesn't really bug me that much. Um, but I like the weapon recoil. I, I decided with that, the, me the magazine reloaded per second when holstered. The reload isn't that bad. I know it's 2.3 seconds, but it's just the you can run like uh, like the synth exilus slot or the synth eximus mod on your frame. Um, you also have like if you're running a panzer, you should be running double synth on that also. So you've got reload naturally. So because you're already modding for stuff like that. Um, like, what is it, Synth Fiber, Synth Deconstruct? Yeah, you've already got this, like, a, a weaker version of this on your frame already. At least you should. Um, so the value of this goes way down. Uh, reload from Empty, kind of the same thing. Um, the reload gets taken care of by the Synth set, unless you're doing, like, say, like a Kuva Chakur, where it's basically got, like, a couple of shots. You're trying to fire them out as fast as possible. Or trying to one-shot something, or like a like the tenant weapons, where they tend to have the longer reload, um, and you really want to stay with the pistols as like a main damage instead of like a strong secondary. Um, I could see a little bit of value in this, but I I like the weapon recoil. I even ran steady hands with it just to completely get rid of it. Um, and there, there's so much inaccuracy anyway, I didn't want to have to fight with the inaccuracy on the bullet hose. 
in the Incarnon mode, because it is fairly inaccurate. It puts out like a nice little cone, right? And the weapon jumping around with the fire rate. Um, I just use this to completely get rid of it with steady hands. So there's like no recoil on the build. But I could see it's up to personal choice, reload from empty or uh, weapon recoil. Um, the middle one, I just don't see any value in. So personal choice, uh, but I did re uh, the recoil. Uh, the third one, not going to lie, this one, let's just go over the evolutions, on, or the evolution four. Uh, increased crit chance by 20% uh, on headshots, plus 70% toxin for 30 seconds. Uh, on kill, plus three punch through for seven seconds. I think this just comes down to modding which one you value more. But the fact is, is you can mod for Toxin. If you want more Toxin, you can do like a 60-60 and like a 90. Uh, or say even like a Riven. Um, I think the exception where this would be the go-to would be potentially uh, like a Saren. And even then, I would be hard-pressed to admit that this is what you would want to go. Over the base crit chance. Um, but on kill... Plus three punch through for seven seconds. Punch through is a super important stat on this. Um, I dealt with it by doing uh, corrosive uh, to get the alpha damage, like the initial hits as high as possible to mow enemies down. Um, because the fact is, is that this is such a bullet hose and one of the things that bullet hose weapons do have issues with is when you're killing an enemy their animation tends to stay there for a bit. Like, it's like a half second, quarter of a second. It's, it's pretty quick. But basically, you kill them, they're dead, they're falling over. Um, well, when you're shooting, you're expending ammo, and you're shooting into a body that takes no damage. So I could see the punch through being of value. Uh, but the fact is, is I would rather just mod for it. The difference between... Seeker and this is like, what, 0.9? It's not a big difference. Obviously, 3 is a better number, but in terms of percent increase, it's definitely a DPS increase. But Seeker on its own deals with the issue of allowing me to shoot into a body that's falling and still do damage to the enemies behind it. So the issue that I was having with bullet hose weapons where I'm expending charges, expending ammo into a body that takes no damage is fixed with Seeker, right? So the th going from 2.1 to 3 isn't that big of a deal. Um, that being said, the only time this is a straight-up loser is if you're doing like a level cap build and you just need as much raw damage as possible. Um then that would clearly remove this from contention. Um, and the on headshot, it, it's, it feels a little too inaccurate when you're trying to like mow stuff down, which is what you're trying to do with this, is you want to mow down like a bunch of enemies. Um, it's not as much of a horde clearing weapon as say like the miter, which we covered last time, but the headshot, I could only see of like real value in like a pure demolist setup with say like a Saren where there's additional scaling that this enables. But for straight up on the weapon, uh, plus 70, plus 70% 70 toxin. I mean, the weapon gives you 100% toxin already, like as a mod. The difference between 100% and s like 170%, those substantial, I think something like this would only benefit like a Saren build with, say, like an Avenger build or something. You know, something really, really niche. Um, but the fact is, is the most general use uh, evolution on here that applies a generic overall buff to the weapon that's most usable by, say, like frame buffs and like arcane buffs, frankly, is just the crit chance increase. And I think it wins by default. Um, and because Seeker's as strong as it is, it... Unless there's, like, a Riven or something that can influence these, I just don't see an, a real need for the on-headshot because you already get the bonus. You you already get this with the weapon, right? The the Frenzy buff. 
and increase crit chance by plus 20. It's base crit chance, so it makes it scale super hard. Brings it up to 31. Um, I'm going to showcase a build where it's a more headshot focused build, showing the interaction with the Scourge for those that are thinking about, you know, level caps and whatnot. You want the crit chance because we're going to throw on some conditional crit chance mods um, to, to get our damage up and you'll see some nice reds, right? So this is just too important for the generic scaling, even over the 70% going from like uh, with the frenzy buff plus 100 plus any mods that you have on there. It just, the toxin on headshot just ends up getting too diluted because there's already easy to access mods in the in the toxin area so you have the 60s 60s you have the 90s uh you have um like ribbons uh which are actually kind of pricey right now and the punch through is kind of the same the even though the modding for punch through is very expensive uh literally almost worth buying a ribbon if you're trying if you have one maybe you kept one good for you because they're expensive as shit right now but if you have a Riven, you can do a better punch through than this. So that's a knock against it, but obviously not everybody has Riven. So the the Seeker mod is like 15 capacity drain or something like that. So the crit chance just ends up being the overall buff. So I think it wins by default. This isn't very complicated, but I'm just explaining um, my reasoning behind it. So let's go to the Simulacrum. We'll look at a couple builds. There's like two or three, and it's there's a general one, and then there's like a specific one for level cap. It's not too much of a hot take. You are a true hunter. Where would the sanctuary be without you? All right, so here's the build for the generic one, or for the generic setup. Really nothing too spicy. You got your base damage, galvanized shot, secondary encumber, um, steady hands, crit chance, crit damage, galvanized diffusion, lethal torrent, 60-60s uh, for corrosive and seeker. It's not a very exciting build. Like it's, if you're looking for a hot take on a build, this one ain't it. It's just a generic setup. Uh, the plus 100, you could further min-max this, God, if you wanted to. Um, and take off the Pistol Pestilence. Uh, I know that seems kind of dumb, but the fact is, is the Frenzy buff gives you Corrosive, and it does combine. So if you wanted a similar build, but you wanted to scale it even further, this Pistol Pestilence would be your faction slot. Just just letting you know. So this would be your faction slot. You would obviously move like Lethal Torn over and adjust it that way. But uh, let me show you what the damage is now. Oh, I still got the Panzer equipped. One second. All right, Panzer is dead. All right, charging the Incarnon, same as always, shoot ahead. We got the Frenzy buff. There's a bit of Ricochet, which I like. It seems like it's a new mechanic they're trying to bring about. But you can see the stacks build up the uh, pretty quickly. The galvanized, the, the mini galvanized stack from the evolution helps us out at the beginning there's no real pain that you experience with say like a merciless buildup um and even deadhead because i tried it with deadhead deadhead clearly does more damage don't get me wrong but there's no pain at the beginning so even with Once everything gets built up, you can see, like, 
it scales pretty quickly because it's corrosive on ferrite, right? Starts out at one, like about 1,000, builds up to 64K. You know, obviously shredding armor. And then we're getting viral stacks from encumber when they do proc. We're getting heat. And encumber does allow for an insane amount of scaling. Don't get me wrong. If if your weapon is additive, it's actually more of a benefit to equip encumber in terms of like hyperscaling. If you have an encumber, it's better to get rid of Hornet Strike and equip a faction mod because of how much galvanized you know galvanized shot scales. It's it's pretty nuts. Um, so this would be like a generic run around setup. Um, obviously, if you're going against like, you know, corrupted, um, maybe adjust your uh, elements. But this would just be like a generic setup. So against the corrupted, uh, you would try to balance the toxin and the slash. So one of the things you could do is you could actually unequip this. Was it a stinger and what else? I think you need stinger and maim to compete. Because one of the issues you're going to have is the toxin waiting is pretty heavy, but you can kind of predict it. So with just as an example, like the pathogen rounds is going to represent more or less the frenzy buff right so in order to balance it for like corrupted you would basically need stinger and maim which is a heavy investment because the slash is 125 the toxin is 121 but that's for 90 so obviously the slash is going to be or the toxin is going to be higher but it's a pretty decent balance because you want to be dealing slash and toxin against corrupted so you actually wouldn't mod this the 90 and this would be uh, your more scaled build. And then you would do corrupted like this. And this would be your anti-corrupted setup, right? So you'd get your slash and when the toxin kicks in, you would then get your toxin and that you would be able to mow down the corrupted with something like this. Uh, so let's talk about the more level cap centric. <laughs> Because I know people want to know what that is. We're going to need our multipliers. Um, we are going to do... Where is it at? And then viral. Because we need as much modded damage as possible. This is all of your multipliers except for velocity. And velocity is going to be on there. We're still at 3.6. So if you have like a Riven or something, um, it would definitely be beneficial to put that on there. Let's get a Caliban with velocity. Okay, easy enough. We got our full strip, we got fire rate. There we go. All right, everybody's grouped. Okay, good enough. So, about a half mil, and that's on the low end. Because remember, we don't have any uh, base damage for it to scale off of. We're not gaining base damage off of, um, say, like Merciless. And Galvanized Shot helps us on multi-hit. So, like, 488... 
Got a little 244 there, 244, 176. Yeah, 376, 344. That's what everything else is going to scale off of. So say about like, say like 200k a shot. And then it gets multiplied by all of the statuses that Encumber can generate, right? Um, now, it, do it doesn't give you pure reds, right? You would, in order to see it, you would need something like, uh, say, like the Scourge, which is a particularly nasty combo. Uh, let's see. If I... Yeah, this one. All right, we're into Toxus. So 334, it doesn't increase your damage, but it guarantees the headshot. Um, so the highest scaling build for this is going to be something like that in terms of like single target. Obviously, you're going to have the ricochets putting in work. Um, but it keeps everything headshots, uh, and it just ends up being the highest DPS if you're trying to do, like, a level cap setup. Uh, and normally you would suffer if you're not keeping the DPS up. You, it, if you run, like, a deadhead, uh, generally for, like, higher levels, if you're not going to be able to keep up... Uh, like the stacks on Deadhead or specifically Merciless. Merciless is pretty bad. Um, though you can do it. But for Deadhead, a lot of times you find yourself equipping like Hornet Strike and just using Hornet Strike and the Deadhead Multiplier. Uh, and you're still getting kills at a higher level. But with this, and because of that uh, evolution that gives us the 33%, uh, like the 33% Galvanize. So basically it's like, almost a full stack of galvanized so that is always in effect so you're always getting that multiplier from uh the encumber stacks and then as it ramps up as galvanized shot ramps up you will then begin to gain those stacks so it's it ends up feeling for me personally way better at the lower end if you will and this setup with Creeping Bullseye, Galvanized Crosshairs, and Velocity um, moves off enough multipliers where you can comfortably fit Velocity and not lose anything uh, because of like a ca any sort of cap. And it gets you just barely into reds to where you'll start noticing them. So, word of the wise, this build is probably going to be your level cap setup. Um, obviously, if you want steady hands, pathogen or deep freeze goes to a 60 60. And something like that, and it'll bring you down to like 5% recoil, which is perfectly fine. And this will give you a nice flexible build. So, three Vs, sorry, four Vs, uh, a D, and a dash. Gives you a nice flexible build, still gives you the uh, run around, run and gun build to where the modding is self contained, like the thing's buffing the weapon. Um, but then, if you want like a level cap setup, this would clearly be it because those 300Ks, 200Ks, 400Ks um, really don't have any stacks yet. So, those would start getting amplified and it'd push you up into the, up into the millions, right? Which is obviously what you want. But not too exciting, uh, but I was starting to get some questions about this. I thought the other creators had, like, covered it pretty well, but this was the modding I was using. Um, it's obviously, like, the only real philosophy on here that could be argued uh, is creeping bullseye and galvanized crosshairs. Obviously, those spots uh, are your flex slots uh, for, say, like a ribbon. Right, so when you roll a Riven, um, you would obviously want crit chance on here, especially because this Riven disposition, Jesus Christ, obviously going to get nerfed. Um, 
but these would be your flex slots and also um, your faction of choice. So if you're used to doing uh, Grenier Disruption Caps, which is still kind of the meta, um, and you just don't want to have to mod for that anymore, you would try to get like a Grenier Faction bonus on your Riven. Um, but honestly, considering all the stuff that we have going on, it's kind of whatever it wants. So I would look for, say, like a... Uh, like another multiplier. Uh, obviously, your CCCD multi-shot is going to be the god roll. Uh, the only exciting thing on it is the god roll would include minus puncture um, n and completely get rid of that. Uh, maybe it, it wouldn't be a god roll, but definitely minus puncture. In terms of what the negative is, minus puncture is the correct answer. Um, for status, or if you're going with a high, high raw damage, maybe you don't want it. But if you're trying to do dots, uh, you could do minus puncture. I would do pu minus puncture if I had one. Um, just to turn it into a slash weapon, it'd be... Actually, what would that end up being? Uh, 40 plus 27. 40 divided by 67. Be a 60% slash weight. That's not bad. I mean, obviously not ideal, but that's not bad. Um, and it would still sort of compete with, say, like the uh, Frenzy bonus, because then it'd be 60% weighting with 100%. That's not the worst. Obviously, that's not ideal. You want 50-50. But if you did like a minus puncture plus slash riven with like CCCD or something like that, you could potentially do that. Uh, or enough fire rate so you can maybe potentially cap uh, like your fire rate with this. But it's a very, very flexible weapon. If you're rolling a weapon for this, you probably know what you're looking for. You just want to see those juicy reds and get that multiplier up. But it, it is what it is. Uh, I hope this helps for anybody that was still like on the fence about this, looking for a build. But there you go, guys. Have a blessed day.